Close your eyes. Take a couple of long, deep in and out breaths. Notice where you feel the breathing in the body. Focus your attention there. And then ask yourself if it's comfortable. If it is, you keep up with long breathing. If it's not, you can change. You can make it shorter, more shallow, heavier, lighter, faster, slower. Try to see what rhythm of breathing feels good right now. We're trying to develop good qualities in the mind. We're giving the mind a chance to rest, but at the same time we're trying to develop some strengths. Mindfulness is a strength. Concentration is a strength. Because we live in a world where things keep wearing down our strength all the time. When we're young we seem to get stronger and stronger, but there comes a point where we're not getting stronger anymore. And then it goes back down in the other direction, in terms of the body. And so you have to compensate to make sure that the mind doesn't weaken. This is what the word med for meditation in Pali, bhavana, means to develop. And we're trying to develop strengths in the mind. So each time you remember to stay with the breath, you're tempted to wander off, but you remember, no, we're here to train the mind. Okay, you're strengthening your mindfulness. And as the mind can settle in, have a sense of belonging here, that strengthens your concentration. When your mindfulness and concentration are strong, then your discernment has a chance to look at things for what they really are. Otherwise, it's, you're driven by your hungers. One of the purposes of getting the mind into concentration is there's a sense of well-being that comes when the mind gets to settle down. That, <clears throat> that well-being is like food for the mind. And so when the mind is fed, then you're not so hungry for other little snacks that would come your way. Because otherwise, the Buddha said, we're like six animals tied to leashes. A crocodile, a bird, a hyena, a dog, a snake. I've forgotten what the last one was. A monkey. And they're all tied to leashes, and the leashes are tied together in a knot. And they pull one another this way, because the monkey wants to go up in the tree, the bird wants to fly up in the air. The hyena wants to go into the charnel ground, the dog wants to go into the village, the snake wants to go down in a hole, but the crocodile wants to go down the river. Whichever one of them is stronger will pull all the rest in its direction. Given that the crocodile is bigger, it'll probably pull all the other animals in the river and they'll all drown. In other words, we go for something that's really attractive, whether it's something we see or hear, taste, touch, think about. And we pull ourselves in that direction. We lose our center, and then we end up getting drowning in greed or aversion or delusion. And so for the safety of our mind, we want to give the mind a post. You can tie the leashes to the post. And as the animals pull this way and pull that way, they can't go anywhere. So finally they're willing to settle down. And when the mind can settle down, then you can see it clearly. Because we spend so much of our time focused on things outside that we miss our own mind. We're in the mind, but we don't see it. But when the mind settles down, you can step back from it from a bit and watch it and say, this is the mind when it's still and at ease. And when it begins to move, okay, which way is it moving? Is it moving out of fear? Is it moving out of greed? Is it moving out of delusion, anger, envy, lust? Why is it moving? And what's going to happen if you let it move in that direction? If you see that the mind has a good reason to go, okay, let it go. But remember to keep it on a leash so that when it starts wandering off into places that it shouldn't go, you can bring it right back. This way, as you get more control over the mind, you're more in control of your life, because your mind is what shapes your life. The things you do and say and think, they all come out of the mind. And this is your way of controlling your environment by controlling what's going on inside. And you're controlling it the right way. Control freaks set things into motion, then they don't like the results and they try to stop the results. But people who are masters of control know that you start at the beginning point. As long as the initial impulse is good, it's skillful. Then you can trust the results will be skillful. So stay at the beginning. Don't try to solve the problem at the end. When the problem is solved at the beginning, right here at the mind. Then you've taken care of everything. As the Buddha said, the mind is the forerunner of all things. Everything you experience comes out of your actions, either past actions or current actions. 
You can't do much about your past actions, but you can make sure that your current actions are in line. And that's how you get some control over the mind, some control of your life. Control it in a good way. Control it for the sake of genuine well-being. Because that's what the Buddha's teachings are all about. He saw how we want happiness, but we do so many things that create suffering and distress. He's basically saying, look, look at your actions. Make sure your actions come from a good place. And then you find the happiness that you want. So stay right here as much as you can, right where the body and the mind meet at the breath. That way you get to see what's going on, and when you see what's going on, then you can do something about it. And that's how happiness is found.